Welcome back to Sahara TV. This is Rudolph Okonkwo, and we've been talking to Mr. Femi Fani Kayode. Now, we want to talk about some of his uh, essays of recent that had been causing a lot of controversies. Uh, Mr. Uh, Femi Fani Kayode, uh, let, me, let me start with the, the essay, the second part, the second essay you called uh, The Truth About the Igbo. Um, do, do, you, do you regret writing anything in that essay? Well, let, let, let me just say, because in fairness to me, let me, let me just give a bit of background, because it can't be just a yes or no. The, the, the fact is that we started off with the first essay, um, which was uh, titled um, Lagos, the Evil, and the Servants of, and the Servants of Truth, mm. uh, which basically touched on the issue of deportations, from, or um, relocations from Lagos State, and so on and so forth. Um, and, I, and I put my views there in very simple language. Um, what happened after that was there were a lot of people that came out and wrote rejoinders and so on and so forth, which now, you know, compelled me to try to now give an analysis of what I believe um, was the history of Nigeria, what I know to be the history of Nigeria and the role of the people of the South East Sufi people mm -hmm. in that history. A lot of questions were raised in the rejoinders that came to the first essay, and I felt it was important yeah. to so try that, to answer Yeah, it. I understand, now, I understand now, how going you... Specifically, going specifically to your question, yeah. okay, going specifically to your question, um, there is nothing in that essay um, that, in terms of historical facts, that, 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 that is not accurate. Uh, everything I put forward in terms of historical facts were 100% accurate. And, you know, I have absolutely no apology to make for saying that. However, it is also important to note that some of the things that were in that essay may well have sounded offensive to people from outside the Southwest. Um, and it was never my intention to offend anybody. I am an integrate. I believe in Nigeria. I believe in one Nigeria. And I do not look down on anybody. I do not believe that anyone is superior or inferior to anybody else. I just felt that in terms of a historical analysis, it was important to be accurate. Mm. I've been writing for almost 20 years. Each time I write an essay on our history or about events in Nigeria, they'll say I'm anti this. I've even been accused of being anti Yoruba. Mm. I've been accused of being anti North, anti Muslim, even anti Christian sometimes. Mm. So, 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 me, so yeah, yeah, so, so, I, I believe you are saying that you believe that everything you wrote there is accurate and that no, you I are standing you, and by. What I said to you was that in terms of the historical. Yeah, historical, fact, yeah, I yeah. Say yeah. Everything. Okay. And then I said there were some things that were there that I may have written which may have made other people feel upset, hurt mm. other people. Mm. It was never my intention to hurt anybody. Mm. And if I did with anything I wrote there, of course, I expressed my regrets about that. Mm. But the most important thing. In terms of the historical facts and analysis, I was focused on that, and and, and, and you know I don't you know there's nothing I've said there which is not historically yeah. accurate. Okay, That's okay, we we don't have time to break these essays down. I w want to frame questions around the content of your essay. Now, d did you read the online reactions, like the reactions of of uh, in social media, what people were saying about the essay? Does that make you feel that you've contributed to the discussion? Or does that make you feel that you have no, no, no. sent yeah. the nation? There are, two, there are two schools of thought about this, okay? Mm. Certainly, you know, the overwhelming majority of people, overwhelming, that come from my part of the country. I didn't say all. I said overwhelming majority mm. of people that come from my part of the country and that come from Lagos State and that have Yoruba extraction. Not all, but the overwhelming majority share my views. They may not say so openly, they may not say so publicly, but certainly they share my views. And that is reflected mm -hmm. within the social media as it is within the Nigerian media itself, which for me is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Now that's number one. Okay, However, okay. there are people Femi, outside, Femi, we have to, we have outside to... from the East. Yeah. There are people from the East yeah. who do not share that view mm -hmm. and who have come out very forcefully to say that I am wrong mm. and they don't agree with me. Mm. It's only an intellectual exercise. We mm. can disagree with one another. Mm. I never claim to represent the Yorubas or the Igbos or anybody. No, but you, you were, because you were saying we, we the Yoruba, and I asked a lot of people, were you speaking for them? Do you feel that you well, are speaking well, for, well, well, for Yoruba? Well, you didn't well, write well, it as well, if it was well, your opinion. Okay, fair enough. If yeah. you want me to go back and change it to I, I'm ready to do that. No, 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 we're, we're not, we're not, however, we're not going however, there. However, I do feel, I do feel that you may have missed the pulse mm. a little bit of the West if you really believe that most people of Yoruba extraction uh, do not share my view. Mm. There, there is always a minority that might... No, no, of course, maybe, of course, of course. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is that I, I, I never, I, you know, if I, if I was holding myself out as the speaker or the savior of the Yoruba nation, I'm sorry, I, that was a mistake, that mm. was an error. I never intended to do that. However, I also know that 
you know, have been in this game for a very long time now, and I happen to know that a lot of people feel strongly about some of these issues. Okay. No, you're, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Let me let me let me ask you this, okay? Because I believe that um, most people who who were responding to you, they believe that ultimately we may have an independent Oduduwa Republic carved out of no. Nigeria. No, wait, wait. It may not be your view now, but ultimately, based on the sentiments you expressed. Okay, it, it looks okay. like the, the nation is not working for everybody. Um, and, and the question that people were asking is, so what will happen to other ethnicity who, people from the other ethnicities who are currently in Lagos? What will happen to them if you right. have Oduduwa Empire? Okay, let, let me just tell you this clearly and categorically. And you know, I don't mince words. I'm very, you know, you must know that by now. And I think exactly what's on my mind. Mm. I do not believe in an Oduduwa Republic. At least not now. I did at the time. Wait, wait, wait. You said at least not now. What do you mean by that? No. I'll explain that to mm. you. When Abacha was in power, mm. and when our people, that's the Yoruba people of the southwestern region of Nigeria, were being killed, persecuted, locked up, tortured, and driven into exile, I was an Odudwaist at that time. Throughout my life, I've been an integrationist up until June 12th. It started after June 12th. Then my views changed dramatically. And by the time Abacha started, I became an Odudua person completely. I stopped believing in Nigeria. Mm. It was Obasanjo that actually converted. It was Chief Bolaigi that told me to come back mm. to Nigeria. I came back. We had meetings in his house regularly every Sunday night before he went back to Abuja. Eventually, I met Obasanjo, and I eventually joined his government. That's when I started believing in this country again. And I'm happy that I believe in this country because I realized I was wrong. Now, no, no, wait, 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 wait. I, I don't want. No, 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 no Before no, no, you, before please, you please, forget. Ever since 2000, ever since 2002, yeah. Ever since 2003, when I joined the government, I, I went back to the views I had had up until the time. Also, to the time that Abacha mm -hmm. came to June, power. June 12th. That yeah, I, I understand. I, I can see the trajectory. I but but let, let me. I do not believe Femi, in Femi, 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 what if, what if, what if something else happens now, as bad as the Abacha period? Are you going to go back to Duduwa, be living in Oduduwa Republic? Let me tell you something today. Because we're not sure. Like, this in, in history, we're not sure yeah, what will happen. Explain, yeah. Fine, let me explain this to you. And I'm happy you asked me this question, yeah. okay? Mm. Look. It's perfectly natural. It, you know, when the Biaf when the Igbos were being slaughtered in the north, mm. they went back to the east mm. and they attempted to carve out Biafra and leave the country. Mm. Okay? And that was, as far as I'm concerned, there was absolutely nothing wrong with that because they felt that people were being slaughtered. Now, if you say to me, if today, for example, somebody gets up and starts slaughtering the people of the southwest, um, I'm supposed to say in the name of Nigeria, we should remain within that situation. I'd say no. I'll say certainly I wouldn't accept that, mm. and I would do probably what Ujuku did in the in, in the early uh, you know during the civil war. But what I probably wouldn't do was attack the Midwest and try to take Igbo land with me. Now that is number one. But I, that will not happen anymore because I think we've moved on from there. How are you sure? How are you sure it won't happen? Something no, will not no, happen. No. No, 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 because we have a democracy now, mm. and people have to be voted in, and mm. we would only vote in people mm. that believe in one Nigeria. Mm. However, within that one Nigeria, I believe that each of the nationalities, or if you like, regions, should be empowered. I believe strongly that we should not act as if we're not different in many ways, depending on where we come from. Okay. I believe that we should devolve power from the center. That doesn't mean I, think, I don't think people should have the right from other nationalities or other regions to live in Lagos or anywhere else. I believe the mark of a civilized society is for anybody that is comes from another part of the country they to live among... Now, now let's, let, let's, uh, let's, let's, uh, Femi, let's zero in on that. Let's yeah. zero in on that because that is the core of the matter. This idea sure. that uh, some people, let's say in this case, in Yoruba people who who live in Lagos, that they have been very accommodating to some other people. Um, how does that factor in in the federal structure that we have and the citizenship of Nigeria? That you feel you are this is your territory. You've been accommodating. Let me ask you: If if Enugu had been the capital of Nigeria for for the past yeah. fifty years, would you not own a house in Enugu? Will you not be, feel that? Let me, let me, what is the difference? Is okay. it because that Lagos became the capital of the country, and now there's the sense that even though you are in Lagos, you are not part of it because you are a stranger? No, no, no. That's no, that's the impression I, I you are curating. No, no, no. Let me. If I gave you that impression, let me let me clear that here and now. I never said for one minute that people were not part of Lagos, were not welcome in Lagos. I don't believe that. They, sh they shouldn't be welcome. They should be part of it. It's, if you, if it's you, their country. Finish, is it not their I'll country? I, if you let me finish, I'll okay. tell you what okay. I think. Okay. Now, of course they're part of Lagos. I reiterated that in an essay. I traced the history of Igbo participation in Lagos, and I also made it clear that we could easily have had 
Zinc as our as our premier in the Western region had it not been for the fact that a few things happened. This man was an evil man, and that's how accommodating. It's never happened the other way round. You've never had. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Evil man. No, 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 no. Wait. Let me yeah, ask the exactly. Question. No, no, because you're going you're going so far away from the question. No, no, no. You 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 put the question. Okay, go let ahead. Go ahead. Question. Okay. Now, let me let me tell you. Let me tell you. Of course, of course. Everyone is welcoming. Of course, they're all part and parcel of Lagos. And frankly speaking, even the issue of deportation or what I'll call relocation didn't really interest me because I felt the timing was a little bit bad. It was bound to provoke a reaction, and we needed to be a bit careful. What I found curious was the fact that after people had been deported to my state or another part of the country, including the north, nobody made any noise about it. It was only when it was 19 Igbo destitutes that were sent across to the east that everybody started making noise about it. But now, do, do, do you know why? Do you know why people made noise about no, no, no. that? See, do you know Rudolph, why? Rudolph, mm -hmm. I want to explain to you. I understand. Let me explain to you why I came into the whole debate. Okay. It wasn't over that issue. It was over one statement that my friend and brother, and I say friend and brother because we've been friends for 35 years, and we've been speaking for every day for the last two, three weeks. People think we're fighting. We talk every day. That's all Jews or Cali. We're very close. He made a public statement in which he said two things. One, Lagos is a no man's land. And two, that um, people, people control 55% of the revenues in Lagos and also control 55% of the business and so on and so forth in Lagos. Now, a lot of us felt very strongly about that. But we didn't get up and start insulting him and saying things. What we did, what I did, was simply write an essay to respond to him, okay? Stating that as far as I'm concerned, it's only my view, you know, this is just my opinion. That, listen, Lagos is not a no-man's land. Lagos is a land which welcomes everybody from all over the country. But the Yoruba people of Lagos, who were there originally and who are still there today, and the Yoruba from other parts of Yoruba that have contributed to Lagos have done so more than anybody else, and they are the owners of the land. That I would never say that Enugu, Port Harcourt, or Calabar is no man's land, even though Calabar was once our capital. It was a, it was a statement that I thought was a bit insensitive, but we're, you know, and I responded to it. And then the other one, that the Igbos control 55% of the wealth and the revenues in Lagos, it was just simply just not. And I also felt it was good for us to argue these matters out in a civilized manner mm. and to, to, to try to establish our case. Mm. Now, if I hurt people by doing that, then it's regrettable. Mm. I never meant to hurt anybody. Yeah, let, 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 Femi, Femi yeah. we have very few minutes left and we have a lot to get okay. to. Well, let, me, let me ask you sure. this because uh, in your essay also, you made references like uh, that Igbo people will not let uh, Yoruba people get into their territory and do the kind of things Igbo people are doing in Yoruba land. I'm not quoting you, but you get expressions like that. You if, 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 if kind of suggested things you like that. You want me to tell you what I said? No, no, I no. what I said. Okay, okay. Well, I traced the history. No, I'm sorry. I just traced the history. Mm. And I, 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 what I did was that I gave specific instances where, for example, Herbert Macaulay handing the flag over to Zik to mm. lead NCNC mm. as a Yoruba man to an mm. Igbo man. Mm. The way in which after the Civil War, Yorubas were allowed, uh, Igbos were, were welcomed in Lagos and were given all their properties unlike anywhere else. Mm. The fact that, um, the fact that um, uh, uh, in, the, in the First Republic, well before the, I'm sorry, in the 40s and so on and so forth, Zik almost became Premier of the West. Mm. These are, and I was asking the question, this is what the Yorubas have done, and we're proud of doing that. That is with open arms. We love people from outside. We welcome their part of us. Mm. Would this be allowed anywhere else? Would we be also welcome in the same way elsewhere? Can you have a Yoruba governor in the East? Can you have a Yoruba council? Uh, yeah, Yoruba? yeah, because yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Now, now, yeah. now, let me, let me, let me present this and see whether you agree with me. Um, yeah. the, the the Western region used to be uh, yeah. part of the old Bendel state. We are, we are part of the Western Union, Western Western region. Now the question, well, yeah, the yeah, they were, yeah, 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 they were all part of it. Okay. Now, now, why is it that you don't have Yoruba investors, investment, uh, or people in, in today's Bini, Bini City or in Calabar? Because he presented okay. as if it's the Igbo that are stopping uh, okay. people from the West because from going to other parts, of, uh, other parts of the country. Sure, sure, sure. It's a good question, and I can answer it very easily. Mm. You know, let me explain to you. The whole Western region, as you quite rightly said, comprised of what later in the Midwest and what has now become Edo State, Delta State, I don't say it in Delta State. I think that's about it. Mm. it was all, they were all part of us. And we have a lot of cultural uh, affinity with them. They are literally part of us. The Benin Mona came from Odidwa. Mm. Um, the Shaitris are part of us. The Urubus were very... In fact, they're closer to us than, than even the East. They really are supposed to be part of the Western region. And they were part of the Western region. And we integrated fully with them, which is why 
If anybody is to say they own Lagos with us, it would probably be the Benin, because the Benins were actually part of us, you know? And not only that, the Shakiri are part of us. The Robos are close to us. The Sokos are close to us. They were all part of the Western region. However, the Easterners, that is, people from the Eastern region, were very, very different. They are known as uh, the Bantu Nigerians. We are known as the Sudanese Nigerians, based on the migrations. The Northerners and the, and the South, the Westerners and the Midwesters are Sudanese. We migrated from the North. And the Igbos and the people of the Niger Delta are Bantu Nigerians. They migrated from the, from, from the eastern coast of Africa and, and central Africa. And that's the line. Now, you spoke about Calabar. Calabar was part of the Eastern region. The Igbos were part of the Eastern region. Um, Akwa Ibom and all the other eastern minorities, Niger Delta, were part of the eastern region. And, and frankly speaking, they were very different to we, to us. I think we lost Femi. Um, I wanted to um, finalize our interview, but um, I think we lost reception with him. So um, we'll um, probably round it up. But um, I still had some questions to ask him, and we will bring him back at a different time and uh, let him. Hello? Uh, Hello? Yeah, Sorry. yeah. Okay. Hello? Okay, yeah, Femi. Okay, yeah. We, we are really out. Uh, okay, okay. Let me let, briefly, just briefly, give me answers to these questions. So, this is this is another thing that worries people. You wrote in that essay, we must resist it. The Igbo have not only taken us for granted, they have also taken liberty for license. What is ours is ours. And no one should test our resolve. I mean, you sounded so angry, and, okay. and people are asking. People are asking if there is, if, if God forbid, there is okay. a massacre of Igbo people in Lagos. Are you willing to? Are you willing? Well, I know, I know. We can say it now, but are you willing to be held no, no, accountable? No, 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 no Femi, 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 wait. Because when you I'm go not, to, I'm not a Nazi. I know, I know, I know, I know that. I know, I know that. You can say that. But, 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 Femi, are you? Let me explain. Do you know that some people can act on what you were writing? I, in let a way that you don't, you don't expect. Explain. Go right, can I, can I explain? Oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. These words, these words, they have been misconstrued. These words, they have been taken in the wrong light. We're not at war with anybody. I don't hate anybody. I don't believe that anybody should go back to where they came from. What I believe in is the fact that I think that it's important that all of us understand that this country needs to be clearly defined. I, I, I know, I people. know, I know that, yeah. Femi. I know okay. that, Femi. What I'm so, saying so, is so this, Femi, issue, in, Rwa issue, in Rwanda, issue. Femi, Femi, in Rwanda, people who made statements like this, they were tried. They were tried for inciting, absolutely inciting that, that genocide. Absolutely, that, that is absolutely not true. That, are you saying that it didn't happen or that that's not your goal? That is not true. People were tried for killing. People no, no, no. The there, were, there were people on radio who were listen, tried have, for, for the statements they made, like this. I, 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 want you, I want you to give me the opportunity to answer. I've heard okay. what you said. Okay, go ahead. Listen. Go ahead. Okay? Go ahead. Now, I'm saying to you, all right, you may read incitement to that. God forbid I did not incite anybody to do anything. What I simply said was that just as other leaders from other parts of the country have said and would say, is that it's important for everybody to respect the rights of everybody else. We have to understand that we fought a civil war in this country over similar issues. That is to say, unanswered nation, national question, or what they call the nationality question. We need to answer that question. What, on what terms is Nigeria to remain together? Or who are the Nigerians? What, you know, are we to remain as one? These are fundamental questions that we keep on refusing to answer. Mm. And I'm saying to you, until we answer that question and settle that issue, there are bound to be ethnic tensions in our country. And it is getting worse and worse and worse. I believe in an integrated Nigeria. That is why I think these questions should be answered. But for us to ignore it and act as if everything is okay, nobody cares, and so on and so forth, that would be very, very dangerous. And we're simply asking for trouble. It's not people like me that you should be worried about that speak their minds and are saying, look, this is a warning signal, and we need to get this right. It's people that don't voice their opinion, but are planning to do terrible things in defense of their territory. Mm. And that, ha that is happening all over the country. And, 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 and I'm right saying, Femi, Femi, and I'm saying that those people who are not voicing the opinion are looking at what you are saying, and, and it maybe is inciting them to actually take action. But let's leave that. Let's leave that. To, Let me, you, Femi, need to, Femi. you need to be very, you need to be very clear because yeah. I, I repeat, never incited anybody. I never intended to incite anybody. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I it's not intentional. Sometimes it's not intentional. Let, let, okay, okay. Let me let me put it to you like this. Yeah. Let me put it to you like this. We are talking about this issue because we're intellectual mm. and because we're educated and civilized. Okay? But not everybody. People it, that are not. No, no. Listen. People that don't think deeply react to such 
to react to such things in a completely different way. You spoke about outrage. Do you know the outrage, the, the number of Yoruba feel about uh, Ojikanu's statement? Mm. Maybe you just don't know. Mm. That is Yoruba here, not Yoruba in America or Yoruba, the elite Yoruba like mm. you. And I, I'm talking about ordinary Yoruba people, how they feel about that. Mm. They feel very, very bad about it. They feel insulted by it. Now, I'm saying it's okay for him to say that. He can say anything he likes, but give me the opportunity to also voice my opinion. Mm. Now, if I hurt anybody by voicing that opinion in a way that was harsh, in a way that was uh, open to uh, different meanings, then I deeply regret that. Okay, but okay. My we, we have to... We, yeah. Femi, yeah, we, we have to... My does not reflect the fact that I'm a tribunal. God okay. We, ha we, have to, we, ha to tribe. we have to round up. We have to round up. I, I agree oh. with you. I, we have to round up. But let me, before we go, right. there was an, a letter, a, a statement was, was issued on your behalf. Uh, yesterday or two days ago, uh, an apology that um, I wanted to know is, did it actually come from you? One BC Lawa wrote the uh, press secretary. No, 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 but of course. Yeah, is that your press secretary? Because I, yeah, it came from me because it, it felt it was perhaps wrong for me to have mentioned names. But I wasn't the first. Each of those ladies that I mentioned had also gone public before at some point or the other about uh, our situation in the past. But I think it was inappropriate to put their names, which is why I directed my press secretary to say that, because we remain friends. And I, and I felt that it was, it was, you know, all I was trying to do was prove that, look, you can't accuse me of being a tribalist, you know, and, and if... And that, that was the I best mean, example was, you was, could no, find. Was that the best way you could prove it? You know, no, 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 it wasn't. You see, that's the problem. I, I cited about 12 other examples, mm. okay? But I agree, nobody's talking about those ones. But it was inappropriate, mm. it was unacceptable, and that is why I expressed regret. I've never expressed regret about anything I've ever written before. Mm. Not only did I express, except this time, and not only did I express regret, it was the online version of the essay that had that part. Mm. The, the, the versions that have been published in Nigerian newspapers um, throughout this country, that part has been edited. I did that, I'm it was wrong, and that's why I apologize for it. All right, uh, finally, um you you had this running with EFCC for several yeah. um, cases. Um, uh, you know them. More than two times you were arrested for different issues, and, and, and they were dismissed. I mean, but that is the same thing with Oju Zokalo, with the same thing with all these former governors. How do, what, how do we look at you and, and think you are different from all of them? No, look, look, listen, you need to understand something about the way... I, first of all, I don't want to say too much because when a matter is in court, mm. I'm always very careful. Mm. But in my, I can speak about my case, and I would be very reluctant to lump everybody together. Mm. You know, different issues, different motivations for these matters. In my own particular case, um, the matter was brought in on a particular issue, the 19.5 billion. Mm. And they realized when the matter started, I was locked up, I was taken to court. They realized when the matter started that I was actually the one that exposed the crime, reported it, investigated it. And therefore, they dropped charges on me and they, they, they're prosecuting my predecessor in office up until today. Now, we went to court or they came back six months later, basically because Yaragua had decided he was going to jail myself, yeah, um, uh, El Rufai and Ribadu at all costs because we're close to Obasan They came back. Six months later, on some stupid charges, they didn't allege I stole anything. They didn't say there was money missing anywhere. They just said, turn over in my account, therefore come. So I said, fine. We went to court. We started the case. They lost to the point of law. They went on appeal, not me. I've been wanting to end this matter long time. They went on appeal. We went all the way to the Supreme Court, came back. They have changed the judges four, four times in the last four years over my case. And they're applying to change it again for the fifth time now. Mm. Each time we make progress. So the fact that it hasn't been concluded is not my fault. Mm. And, but I can assure you that it is purely you know, politically motivated. If you can't prove a case in five years, it means you don't have a case. And I can assure you I'm not worried about that. In any case, an innocent has a proven guilty. The worst thing you can do is to say somebody that has been inducted by the state is guilty until he's proved innocent. Okay. Because that way the state will simply Fem go after you, Femi. including you, Rudolph, mm. and say, we don't like Rudolph, let's allege he stole mm. money. Femi, Femi, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting, we've, we've gone beyond our time. Um, okay, I, 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 will, I will have to leave you, but I, I have to say that there were a lot of uh, things that were on the web that I didn't think is I'm proper sorry. for me to, to talk to you about. Uh, but one of yeah. the questions that everybody is asking, and I think it's a fair question that you, maybe you can use this to, to answer this opportunity to clear it. Do you, are you, do you take any kind of drugs, hard drugs? Or oh, please. 
No. Please, please, please. That, that, is, that question is an absurd one. Well, um, I, because, I, because I, don't, no, no, I, no, I want to give it a chance, question. yeah, because I don't want to talk yeah, about other things. Absurd, it's an absurd question, and, and not only is it an absurd I mean, I'm not saying you're absurd. Yeah. It's just an absurd question. Yeah. And, of course, they've not only said I take drugs. I've actually written it in one of my latest letters. They said that I also should be in jail. Mm. They said that uh, so many disgusting, despicable things. If anybody wants to take me on, take me on on the issues. Don't talk, take on my. All right, all don't right, all right, all right. No, don't, don't say I I'm just, I just, and I'll, tell, I'll, and I'll tell you what. If mm. I sound like somebody that takes drugs, then maybe more people should take drugs because mm. I think I talk a lot of sense. Mm. It's very, very wrong and important for people. All right, to say all right, that. all right. If anybody has any evidence of that, they should bring it forth. All right, all right, Mr. Femi Fani Karede, thank you so much for coming to our show. Thank you very much. All thank right. you. Okay. All right. So nice. we've been. Talking several issues uh, that he raised in his essays and Nigeria as a whole. I hope we stay tuned and continue to watch our programs for today. Thank you.